If you can remove some spaces and then you will see if NiPy takes more one, so you can uninstall NiPy and the uh, other one will not take the problem. Oh, you don't think other than uh, the other uh, softwares that we're going to go through is going to take that mm -hmm. much? Yeah, because but NiPy I... is a two, three GB state, right? Uh, okay. Yeah. Actually, just, just this morning, I got NiPy installed. I had a question about it as well, but um, I could check my space now to see how much is remaining. Because I think I, you put in your note that uh, NiFi takes like minimum 4 GB to... Um, yeah, the new NiFi. The NiFi... Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at my... Is, uh, this is my older version. Like if you go for 1.2.4, that is a 1.10. But the newer version of NiFi will be taking... 1.24 is a newer one, right? So it's a 1.24. Oh, okay. Sorry, I was thinking Airflow, uh, but you were saying NiFi. So yeah, I installed Airflow as well. But um, okay, so right now I'm looking at my 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 disk space through terminal, and uh, I I have um just on uh, just over two GB left. What what are it? Two GB. I have two GB remaining uh, space now with uh, Airflow as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I think I'll try. Um, I I think I can try myself. I just wanted to ask you in case you know you were able to, um, like if you knew uh in terminal if there was some method that was better than others or less risky than others. So how much? That's... So how in the virtual virtual VM you already allocated, but I'm saying. How much you have in the disk, right, in your uh, window? How much uh, disk oh. size? Oh, yes, I have enough. I have uh, two different drives, so I should have more than like 100 if I wanted to make space for it, like extra 100 okay. gigs that I can make space for. See, the steps are there. I'm telling you, but it will be lengthy steps, okay? Because mm -hmm. these are the, otherwise, if you have a good space, another VM you create, okay? Yeah. Because these, these other things you are going to do now, right? Because now you are going to start the A, uh, AWS, okay? So, right. still Airflow, if you are not able to run the Airflow also, suppose, in this VM, so create uh -huh. a one more new VM and install mm -hmm. Spark and uh, install Spark and Airflow and, and practice for the Airflow Spark, okay? Okay. Right, in the new VM. Just create a new VM and uh -huh. so you will be running a VM at a time, only one VM, right? That's right. Okay. That's right. Yeah. So whenever you want to run Hadoop or things and and remove uh airflow everything from that VA, okay, just make it mm -hmm. uh, more space, okay. So whenever mm -hmm. you want to practice for Hadoop, this part, whatever you have already there, right, Mongo, Cassandra, you can practice there. And mm -hmm. whenever you want to practice for airflow, you can mm -hmm. do this. Otherwise, airflow and this one you can do even AWS cloud also. Okay, I will okay. show uh, AWS setup right. Okay. Yeah. They can do. Okay. So only for Airflow, you want your practices remaining. So you mm -hmm. can create a new VM with Airflow and Spark. That will not take time. Okay. And give yeah. that time approximate 25 GB space you give. That is sufficient. Okay. Yeah. So, okay, I see. so rather yeah. than changing this VM, remove the mm -hmm. Airflow, whatever you installed it, you remove it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Only mm -hmm. keep it for Hadoop and uh, Spark, you keep it there. And yeah. uh, another VM you create for Airflow and Spark for practice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So 25 yeah. GB is sufficient and that VM you start for practice. Okay. And okay. And you, will... and, uh, you think that with the remaining of the, the, the software that we cover with the rest of the course that my first VM without Airflow and uh, yeah, without Airflow will be enough space, my 40 gigs? So, now 40 GB, the Windows one. Uh no 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 my 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 VM that I have now which is forty gigs um mm -hmm. you're saying you know uninstall Airflow um 
And then if you, when we do practice, you use another VM. So making it using the minimum 25. No, you are saying in the two, two GB space is left, right? And if you're not, see, if you're able to just practice for the, those examples, which I have completed with Airflow, mm -hmm. Airflow will not give it a problem. Okay. okay. Airflow, yeah. Spark, uh, Spark is already running. Only Airflow, yeah. you have to install. And I think two GB volume is left also. That is fine. I think it will work. Okay. Okay. So then okay. no need to create. First you check okay. like you are, you are able to run your airflow and you are able to manage or not in that space. Mm -hmm. okay. If it is not, then remove other things you can remove, right? Yeah. Yeah. If yeah. NiFi you can remove and then move it to NiFi in the other VM you can do. Okay. Yeah. Because NiFi okay. these things like independent, right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, but actually, I think uh, airflow will work. Airflow. Otherwise, airflow yeah. I will in uh, AWS cloud also, okay? So you can okay. check that in practice. See, if you have installed in the local Ubuntu, you can install mm -hmm. anywhere in the cloud. Same thing is there in the cloud. Like you create a one Ubuntu machine, I will show that uh, AWS in the right? So mm -hmm. you create a virtual machine and then you can practice, okay? Okay. Okay, and, so that um, is not a problem, okay? Yeah, so I think I'll do that. Only we'll Airflow and the Spark uh, examples, I believe uh, you can do in the cloud also. Okay. And uh, actually, I have one question for my Airflow installation because mm -hmm. uh, I just, I was having trouble with it um, all yesterday, but uh, this morning I, I so tried to find a different guy. If you want to show me, show me. I will, I will check it. Just show me. Yeah, sure. So I just have a quick question for it, but yeah, let me, let me stream. One second. Yeah, so I'm sharing my screen right now. Yeah, so you are getting some bag error. Yeah, so I have a quick question, which is just uh, like I I went with a different um installation because the one that I had was having actually the code actually this is like your installation now you have some missing steps okay uh -huh. because uh, you know, it is not properly installed though so that the the default uh, operators are not coming here, this branch operator or this one. So yeah. example DAG is not able to find this operator. So example yeah. DAG uh, is a folder. I told you, right, there are all the examples are there. So yeah. those examples, those uh, DAG should not give any error issue. So it means when you follow the, there is the steps here. Um, I can show you one second. Uh, it's over here. Um, yeah, so the, oh, that's oh, what I wanted to oh, ask is, um, so normally with the installation that you, you provided, right, um, it wasn't working. So what I did was uh, I, I went to just the uh, Airflow website, right? And I used these, right? So I followed this uh, installing a lower version of PIP and then uh, using system dependencies and then uh, essentially the this. So whatever step I given that you didn't follow? Uh, I couldn't because I, I tried it and it, I was having a lot of issues. Okay, so can you go I, there? I'll, I'll, I know that uh, this issue is because of uh, something is missed. Can you yeah. go there? And, and I'll also one more thing is uh, uh, in terms of the extra packages that we installed, I, I tried to uh, use all of them as well. So like for most of these, like I saw the ones that weren't in the regular installation because that one is just the vanilla. Mm -hmm. uh, so I tried to do all this to cover anything that we needed. And yeah, that was my question. Everything in between the stars here, I, I ran as well in case, uh, and I have okay, the log so actually, okay, I have the log printed out as well. So I know the ones that didn't work. I'm having a doubt on the... Okay, can you go to your terminal? Where is the terminal? This is in Windows local? Okay. Yes, sorry. Copy this uh, here. Yeah, sure. It's okay. All different steps. So. Okay. Yeah. Mm.
Yes, I think when I ran this, I had um, one okay. library that didn't work. Let me type in my password. Okay. Yes, the APT package was modules not found. That's the one error that I had with these lines. Yeah, actually, maybe this I forgot to run. Maybe I don't have these actually. So this is installing now the package, right? Yeah. Okay, Ron is the Sugo APT get upgrade. Great work. Mm -hmm. So those packages like now this uh you know the Syndra one is coming, you can remove it, right? Because the uh, some older ones. Yeah, I I was meaning to look that up, but I just didn't find the so. find some uh, command and you can remove those packages. Actually, it is already added in the repository, so it uh -huh. will be checking all those. Yeah. Also, you were mentioning the, the DAG folder. That's very important to have. Um, is that automatically installed as well? You have to do it. Okay. okay. So you, you already did it at your home directory. Yeah, yeah I think there this is, is it here. So how you are running that, oh, it's still a, you have, you got the error in the UI itself, right? Okay, okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. so here I didn't do that yet. I think first, uh, now your UI should be clean, right? There should be no error, okay? Then only you can proceed yeah. with your DAG, okay? Because still the error okay. means like it's a installation error, right? Okay, your mm -hmm. UI is coming, but uh, it's not able to, um, some some package is missing because of that, the other type of operator, other operators are giving issues, right? Inbuilt operators, right? What Whatever mm -hmm. comes to the installation, so that is not coming, okay? Mm -hmm. So something branch operator, it was saying. Yeah, so this one is coming, right? Example branch operator. So branch operator is the, the only problem, right? So that it is not able to. So it is saying virtual VM environment required the VM for virtual environment. So virtual VM is not set. Right, virtual environment. Your version is the which Python version you have? Uh, 3.8. 3.8. Yes. Because I, I, I accidentally tried it with 3.10, which I had, but later I realized that uh, it's not uh, tested for it. Like the Airflow website is saying that it's only up to 3.8 that they, they've they uh, tested mm. it for. So I think this command didn't run, right? This package command, that's a reason you... Yeah, uh, yeah. I just forgot to run after. Uh, hey, Ruby, uh, Mohan Krishna is waiting uh, to join the call. Can you add him? Oh, yes, yeah, sorry, yeah. I see. Uh, okay, yeah, I'll yeah. invite you both.
Okay, it's finished. Okay, Uh, what is that dead dead snakes um uh, like is this examples generally python installation we do this is the python solution right so here if you see is already up to date. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that pipe install virtual? Yeah, user. Uh, for me, I use a different one, Airflow. This uh, command didn't work, but uh, uh, it said okay. Python. Uh, let me check one second. Uh, it's over here. I give this Airflow standard. Python, yeah. Airflow standard will work, not directly. Yeah, for me, it didn't, and then I looked it up. So let me try Airflow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, I would have a path so variable. The local... Then, okay, because home path is not set here. Yeah. Okay, try, try with this. Yeah. Do I have to stop it right now, or yeah. uh, it already was stopped, right? And it still is not uh, started. Okay, that we have to. Okay. Assistance, uh, like either we have to find uh, the service, right? Uh, AUXPS, right, command. 
Otherwise, it will be saying here already bind with this error. Okay. It's gone. Yeah. Now you can go. Okay, great, great. Thank you for your help. Okay. I'll stop sharing screen. So only virtual environment is needed to so have to install. So that yeah. command now there generally we install Python, we have those stacks that we do virtual right. environment. If you are using PyCharm, the PyCharm creates automatically because PyCharm is using virtual VM. So yeah, I think so I you think don't I have PyCharm, right? You don't have PyCharm, right? Yeah, I do have PyCharm, but I think what happened was uh, this entire uh, environment was on my uh, Python 3.10. And so when I downgraded mm -hmm. because of, I learned I can't use it with Airflow, maybe I, I missed it. Um, this yeah, version. so if somebody has uh, already installed the PyCharm, the PyCharm will have virtual EMP. Okay, so no need to. That's the reason I, I didn't get the error. When I installed Airflow, I didn't mm -hmm. get it because mine is already there. Okay, yeah. but if you're manually installing the Python and uh, then you are, uh, uh, you have not installed PyCharm, so you have to do manually. Okay. Okay, so. <clears throat> I'm going to start the cloud services. Okay, so we are going to start AWS. So AWS account. So you have to. You can uh, apply the AWS credit also. I'll I'll tell you how you can apply for AWS credit. So if you search AWS free credit, so you have to add some POC in your form. You have to fill up one form. Okay, because it's not a guarantee you will get the hundred or not, but if you apply and put it in a proper way, right? Uh, like uh, you give a justification of your uh, required candidate, so you will definitely get the credit. Okay. So, but it is not a guarantee. Depend on your uh, what the information you are providing because this information is AWS is basically analyzing, and if they find if your uh, justification is uh, like uh, it's correct, then they will give you three hundred dollar credit for six months. And that will be good enough for you to practice all the things. Okay. Even some paid services are there. You have to pay for that. So your uh, amount will be deducted from the credit. So you have to first, first you have to create a, your account because account is a mandatory first here. Because you cannot ask any credit without account. So account is needed first. So one free tier, uh, one uh, uh, through using your credit card, I will show you that how to create account but you have to give your account ID here. And email you use Gmail ID. Job, job role you can say here you are, uh, you can, uh, what's the question? IT professional you can say, okay. And uh, uh, job role you can tell, or developer engineer you can say, anything is fine. Project description, this is the important thing here. Here your project description, you have to show some project real-time use case scenario, right? Not only just one or two services, like you have to tell end-to-end -end pipeline scenario, right? You are reading data from, and everybody should give the different one. If some people have given the similar um, project description, they will visit, that, okay? Because they have all the information, right? So. They analyze completely your use case scenario and you tell about AWS based, right? If you are just telling on premises, they will not give you. So you have to show, I'll, I'll give some descriptions, or like you can use it, but change the different, different combinations. There are the, some project pro project scenarios are there. So this kind of scenarios, some AWS cloud projects are there. So you can take it here, yeah, different, different projects. You can talk to each other and then decide what you are going, what you are doing. So you can 
two. So here AWS, like here, uh, different uh, project is there, like some AWS EMR project, okay, AWS Glue project. So you have to take it uh, like a paid services things, right? You have to tell like, okay, you are going to use this kind of architecture. So just to write it, this entire architecture thing in a paragraph. So you can tell about uh, your, uh, you are performing a ETL pipeline and uh, uh, to complete one overflow, right? Like this kind of architecture you can explain. So high level explain because they are not looking much in the just they want to check uh, what type of services you are going to use and those are the paid services, right? Like this type function is a paid, okay, right shift is a paid, okay? So like this kind of project uh, you have to show here and uh, project intent you can say like some development and testing project or proof of concept you can say, POC project. And time frame you ask for four to six months. Budget range say up to four ninety nine. Okay, because they can give three hundred, so it will come in this range. Workload type you can say it's a, a data analytics project, with data analytics and business intelligence. Company name any company you can show size and phone number. Industry you can say IT, computer science or any. And the region and this and personal meeting. And just submit this request and whatever email you associated, right? So they will implement. So you keep it your same email ID of your account. So you will register your account. So you have to uh, tell the same account, okay? Uh, so that uh, they will credit the amount that account for the same email ID. So how to create your new account in AWS? So when you go to AWS console page, so here you can sign up, like you can go to the here, this is coming, I show you, um, to see here, here is a create a new AWS account. So new AWS account, you have to choose here your root email ID, and you have to give the account name. Okay, so, So if you have some uh, email ID, you have to give some email ID, common name you can save. So you ask for verify. So verification it does for your email ID. Then it is asking the password. So password policy, right? Whatever is the password policy is there. So you can set the password. And uh, once you go to the next step, it will be asking your other details, right? Yeah. So it will be and uh, personal use. You can say phone number. You get same credit card, you cannot register two times. Okay. If my my already registered, but let's see that it will not allow. Your US data. Okay. This is a simple step that you can create uh, your free account. So here is a credit card. So this all information once you fill up, okay, and they will verify it, and then it will detect a one dollar. But this one dollar will be revert back, okay, 
after justice for verification. Okay. So it's for verification. This is a step three. Once it's done, it will do your mobile verification, your uh, phone number verification, and after that, you will get the account ready. Okay. So once your account ready, you will have you have already created your username and password, right? So when you log in in the console, so when you do sign in, so you have to use the same your ID, okay? So whatever ID you registered, okay? I'm going to my feed, my existing account. So once you log in, you will get this dashboard page. So once you come to the AWS console page, right? Okay. So once you come to your AWS console page, so here uh, you can see all the uh, listing of the services. So here the services. When you click here, here the category of the services are there. So here are the more than 250 services, but we are concentrating mostly on the compute services, some database services, container services. Okay, analytics services. Right? So analytics is a data base, data, data engineer service, like your uh, uh, data analytics related services. So EMR is there, Glue is there, Kinesis is there. Okay, some services like Athena we will have to use. Okay, but here also some of the services will not use, right? But but some of the like here is the Kafka is also a managed service. MSK is there. Kafka is a managed service. So these services are ready-made services. So generally Kafka, you create your own cluster, but here MSK is providing fully managed services. Like for Airflow also, AWS is providing MWAA. So MWAA is a managed Apache Airflow service. So this service is inbuilt service, but these are all paid. It's Kafka, MSK, Airflow. So these are the managed services. Even you can get the Document DB. So document DB is a uh, um, as a MongoDB, okay, document store. Okay. So it's a MongoDB, fully managed MongoDB. If you want to see Elasticsearch, so Elasticsearch is a open search, open uh, open source, but here is a open search, its name is the open search. So whatever Elasticsearch you use, its name is the open search here. Okay. If you see Cassandra, Cassandra here is a key space. Cassandra is an Amazon key space. This is the service name. So all services are managed services. Whatever tools you know, so those are here as a managed service. So first we start with compute service and EC2. Like we have to create a machine. So we have to create our virtual machine. So EC2 instance we have to create. So whenever we come to EC2 machine here, right, EC2 instance, like right, EC2 instance. So here EC2 instance, so we right now, my all instances are stopped. It is not running, right? Okay. But if you you know the AWS is the as you pay go model, right? How much you are using, it will be you have to pay for that. Okay. If you are not using a stock, it will not be paid. But some of the these instances are using some EBS volume storage. EBS volume storage is your local machine is a storage, is there, right? Some disk space. So for disk space, they charge very normal, right? It's just uh, like $1, $2 charges, like for your one instance, right? So it is not too much, okay? But even your instances is stopped, but you have to pay for storage charge. But for the running charge, like whenever your instance is running, that is you have for uh, 750 hours is free. So you can see the complete uh, AWS free tier eligibility. Free tier, uh, you can see what are the, AWS free tier uh, eligibility is there. So 750 hours for the EC2 instance is there. DynamoDB is a 25 GB. So this all limits are good, but but there is a, some limitations, like 750 hours is total. Suppose you have created two or three instances, then it will calculate the total number of hours of all two or three instances. Okay. 
So if your one instance is running 24 by 7, that will not also complete the 750. So one instance is fine. One instance if you are running. But if you are running your instances like some hours, okay, so even two or three instance you can create. Okay. But they have given T2 micro is free. But if you go to more higher version like T2 medium, okay, so it will have some cost. Okay. So everything you will come to know what you are going to create. Okay. So we are going to launch instance and we are creating our new, our EC2 instance. Mine is a two instance. And this EC2 instance, I'm selecting here what type of EC2. You want to get Amazon Linux or Mac OS. So these are the chargeable one, Amazon, this Mac OS thing. Ubuntu, Linux, this one you can choose. And here is a mention the which is eligible for the free tier. The free tier, whatever account you create, it is a one year free tier. So one year you will get this services free, right? Free tier. Okay. So, but if you go to the this version of the Ubuntu, because this one is a free tier, but the other one is if you go, these are the high capacity volume op operating system, right? Like some data deep learning related, right? So, so those are the not eligible for free tier. So if you select this one free tier, and here is a, uh, the instance type. This is the operating system. So every operating system has one AMI. What is AMI? AMI stands for Amazon Machine Email. So if I say Ubuntu, Windows, Red Hat, SUSE Linux, Amazon Linux, every Every operating system has one image ID. What is this image ID? This image ID. Even if you create your own VM and you can create an image for that. And that image there will be assigned one image ID. And uh, if you make it that image publicly, so anyone can use your image as an instance and can use your, uh, uh, can get your entire setup. Okay. So, so you can create your own um, uh, Amazon machine image. So here is a AMI option is there. So you can create your image, you can create a backup of your image. So anything you can do, okay? But this is a predefined, this is a predefined operating system images are there, okay? If you select Windows, the so Windows has different image ID. This is the AMI for Windows, okay? So we are taking Ubuntu here and uh, here is a instance type is there. So for free tier, they are giving only one CPU, one GB memory, and eight GB is a default storage. Okay. But suppose I want to create a T2. After the T2 is small is there and T2 medium is there. So T2 medium is four GB RAM they are giving and two CPUs they are giving. Okay. But this space, it is in your control. You can change as much as you want because there is an option in the down. You can select. So first you select your instance. Suppose I'm selecting this instance and I have to provide a key pair. So what is a key pair? Key pair is your uh, credential, right? Yeah, you are access key to access your instance. So you can create a new key pair, but always what we do, we have already key pair and we use that key pair always, okay? Because for every instance, if we create new, new key pair, so we have to remember which instance is having which key pair. So better to create a one key pair and use it for all the instances to so give existing one. So give existing one so that it will validate your uh, uh, access, right, with that key pair on it, okay? So if you take it this key pair here, so now this key pair I should have already, okay? If you don't have the key pair in the beginning, you create a new key pair. So you click on this and it will ask you, you want to create a PAM file, public file or private key file. So there are the two options. You can create your key pair with the public key or private key. But if you create a public key, you can use this public key in your Git bash. So Git bash, Git bash, you know, right? This is a, a Linux terminal in Windows. Linux terminal in Windows, you can access your Linux command, you can access your uh, any server, right? SSH connection you can do, SSH connection you can do. So here, 
this one needs your pam file if you are using putty putty needs ppk file so at a time you can create only one so better to create a pam file and there is a putty generator is there you can convert putty gen to convert your pam to ppk okay i'll show to you so i create here a new key pair okay so i'm showing you the option with the new key pair the same option you will use okay Okay, some name I given for identification. I'm creating a PAM file, create key pair. So my create key pair, my key pair is saved, right? My key pair, PAM file is saved, okay? Now I have given this key pair, okay? So I will show you that how to convert this key pair to the uh, PPK, okay? And next thing is, while creating a instance, you have to choose the security group. What is security group? Security group is defining basically inbound and outbound rule right so if you are going to access other system or your system is being accessed by other system so there is an inbound and outbound rule there so inbound rule means like you are going to access your system like ssh connection is a inbound rule right like 22 port ssh is there so if you have enabled ssh you can access your ec2 instance so if i'm using a security group so I can give the default uh, security group or I can create a new security group. But SSH should be there first because initially you will be going to access your EC2 instance by SSH only. Okay. So if any previous security group I'm going to use, all these security group, if I go to the security group, I will find, if I check the security group, so... So this security group, the SSH is by default is there. Okay, whenever you are creating a new security group, the first time, the default security group they give. One default security group with SSH is there. So security group, uh, right, this is the default security group. Uh, and this default security group is associated one default BPC. Okay, this is a default BPC security group. So you will get like this security group, the default security group, you will get this. And if you click on this security group, so you will see it is enabled for all, all traffic. So all traffic means everything is enabled. But if you want to explicitly do SSH, so you can click on the SSH and the 22 port, you can add a room. But all traffic is good because all type of, all, all port will be accessible. So all traffic is means like when you are having all traffic in your security group means it means it's a uh, it can be access anything right okay but if you want to specific SSH only so you can define SSH even if you add SSH it's not a problem you extra add and custom you can make it anywhere IPv4 okay and save this room okay so now in my this default security group. The two rules are there, but this all traffic is automatically covering this SSH. Okay. Okay. But if you don't have all traffic, so, but at least SSH should be there. Okay. And default port of SSH is 22. If you don't have this SSH, you can't access to git back. SSH command you can't run. Okay. So to access your EC2 machine, you define in inbound rule. Outbound rule is suppose your your machine can access the other system right so here is also all traffic is there okay so but we are concerned first inbound rule because we want to access our ec2 machine okay so here while creating an instance i will choose default security group i choose okay so i check here this is a default security group i added this default security group this is sc same security group which i changed it if you see bd 11 d bd
Pozdravovali jsme se v první kudopní. Let's search this one here, so it's pretty good. This is the one. This is also the call. This is also having all factors. Okay. So this is my all factors. So this BT, now it's it, right? BD11, okay? And the uh, disk space, right? I told you, right, you can have, like, uh, you can you can give the capacity here. This is the by default 8 GB comes, but you want to say 60, but total three tier eligibility is 30 GB. So suppose you have a three instance or five instance, you will not be charged up to 30 GB, but if it is going beyond the 30 GB, Suppose my four instances are there and some instance is taking 10 GB, one is taking 20 GB, like that, different combinations are there. The total 30 GB is, there is no charge. But after that, it will be very minimal charge is there. So the, the EBS volume, this is called EBS. So, so in uh, AWS, it is uh, storage, like elastic block storage. And this is a storage for the your EC2 machine internal storage. One is the S3 is there. I will tell about S3 is a file system that is common to all, all instances. But EBS is a particular to the instance storage that is called EBS. Okay. So, okay, so I'm going to launch this instance. So everything is ready in this instance. Okay. And I click on the launch. And now I will see my instance is coming here, pending instance. So it will be taking some two seconds and uh, then it will come in the running state. So once it comes in the running state, how many ways I can connect to my EC2 instance? Okay, so I will show you how you can connect to your EC2. Okay, if I want to generate uh, my PPK file, okay, so I open my Putigen, okay. I will mention this all tools, whatever the tools you need it. So one is a Putty you need and one is a Putigen, okay. So Putigen and Putty. Putty is for the connect to your EC2 instance and Putigen is conversion of your, your PAM file to PPK file. So you load the file, so I download it. So it's a all file you do, then it will come. Okay. So my batch 2024-01 key pair, so this file I will take it and here I will save as a private file and just make it yes. And now I, I keep it similar name so that I will be remembered. Okay, so PPK, PPK extension. So now I have a PAM and PPK both are there. Okay, so whenever I want to connect with the Git bash, I will use PAM file. And when I want to connect with PuTTY, this is PuTTY, I will use PPK. Okay, so let's see our instance is started. Okay, so my instance is running. Okay, it, it is initializing. Okay. Now I want to connect to my EC2 instance. So how many ways I can connect? One is even without key pair also you can connect, but that is provided by the, that is provided by AWS connect, click on connect. And there is a EC2 instance connect. So this one is now, we don't need any key pair. Directly you can click on connect and it will, it will establish the connection and we give you the term. So you will get a virtual machine. 
here you will not get a user interface, right? Like we have our Ubuntu locally, right? In virtual box that we have the user interface, but this is like a, you get a VM, okay? And you will get a command line. Key. So here you entered in your Ubuntu VM. So if you see LS here, everything is clean up, right? Nothing is here. You want to create a, some directory, test one, two, three, CD, test one, two, three. Okay, so you can do any installation, configuration, you can do here. Okay. And whenever you are not using the instance, you can stop the instance. Okay. So, but this is having the capacity of the RAM and disk, right? So you have to, um, like the RAM is only just one GB RAM. It's running with the RAM. But for a small type of installations and practice, you can do here, okay? Not like a Hadoop, right? Uh, it's not good for Hadoop, okay? Because the uh, Hadoop is minimum like uh, some large instances needed, right? Like good capacity of that. So if I create a, some file here, okay? So here, if I'm able to, see my file, I want to see my file content. So I'm able to see, okay? And now I'm going to access the same EC2 machine through Git path. So how to access? You, now it is two by two check pass, right? So whenever you are able to see this status check means your instance is running successfully, okay? Now you click on this and uh, click on the connect. It is showing here SSH client. Just copy this one. Now click on this. Here you will see your key pair, PAM file, and this SSH command. So you don't need to write this command manually. Copy this command, go to your Git path, and first you go to the download folder because this PAM file is downloaded in the download. You go to the download. Okay, here, if I check my uh, PAM file, so you can just check uh, whether it's there or not. So back just to write 2024 star. So you can come, you can see here, two files are there. One is a PAM file and one is a PPK file. So whichever location you have this file, just run this command here, okay? Enter. And yes, and now you are entered in your VM, okay? You are logging into the VM and now you can see LS, CD, test one, two, three directory. If you see ls, you have, you can see your file, my desk. Okay. And there is another way, this is a putty, but putty you can, okay, this is a git bash. So here multiple sessions cannot be created. Okay, so there is a mova xtrum is there. So mova xtrum is a multiple windows one. So if you, Yeah, the MOVA is from here. This is showing my application. If you click on this one, it will be showing you this interface, okay? And here you can create a new session and SSH connection. Here you have to give public IP, okay? Here you have to give the public IP. Okay, so public IP you can find in your instance. This is your public IP. Uh, here you can see this is the public IP or you can see the public IP in the instance here also. Okay. This is the public IP. And this is a private IP. So private IP is for internally it uses and public IP if you are using from outside you want to connect. So public IP is there. So public IP you will use and here is a default username for Ubuntu is Ubuntu. So Ubuntu is a user, the default user. And uh, here we have to give our PAM file. So here it is mentioned private key, but even you can give the PAM file. Yes.
But here the advantage is for the same you want to repeat multiple windows, duplicate tag you can open. Are you able to access that three multiple tabs you can open, right? So if you want to do some installation parallelly or something you want to do multiple activities, so we use the MOVA extern because putty or git patch is giving one session at a time. So you have to open another git patch window or you have to open another putty window. Okay. But this MOVA extern is giving you same thing you can get it here. Ls cd test one, two, three, ls. Then you can see this is a file. Is that my test? Then you can see. Okay. Now, if I want to connect with the putty, so I need a same public IP. Okay. So, what public IP I need? Uh, here also, I need a public IP. So, this public IP, I will copy this public IP of an instance is here. And here is the PPK file is needed. We already converted PPK file. Go to R and go to credential here you set private key file so here you select your ppk file so this is the ppk file you select this ppk file and open accept and again you give the ubuntu okay there is no password thing so you directly log in, in the so it is it is because of password is not needed because it is using your ppk file if this ppk file anybody gets he can log in into your EC2 machine through command line. Okay. Right. So that's the reason this file should be secure. And uh, you cannot, if this file is deleted, you can't get back this file again. You have to create a new PPK file. Okay. Or new PAM file you have to create. See, PPK file you can generate from the PAM file. Okay. So that's not a worry. But PAM file is deleted means you can't get again download the PAM file. So you have to create a new key pair. You have to create. So now if you see here in the in the putty, so ls cd test one two three. So this is the four ways like we can connect uh, EC2 instead. Okay. So did you understand like this? Anyone is fine. Okay. For practice purpose, right? You want to do work on your EC2 instance, you can connect anyone. Okay. Like one is uh, using the directly connect is there, this connect. So this EC2 connect is without key pair. Okay? You can directly choose this. Term. Okay. Okay. So once this EC2 instance is created, right? Uh, there are, uh, group we already talked about key pair we already talked about okay so key pair is a separate service so whenever you create a new key pair it is it is stored okay so one thing is there in the aws is uh if you see the right top corner your account id is there any this account id you will use it in your credit like free credit you are going to so this is a unique id so this unique id you have to mention so they will credit the amount in this particular account okay if you want to go for the billing cost okay so you will see two billing cost and there are the multiple reasons are there right so whichever reason is your nearest reason you can use that one okay so i have a some problem in my virginia region right this is the nearest one to me but i had a some problem so i'm going to use this mumbai region but you can use any reason it's not a issue but the nearest reason will be faster. Okay. So, so different reasons. So, so you you have a high availability things is there. Like you are creating a resources in one reason, you cannot access the another reason, right? So, like reason specific resources are there. So, whatever this, uh, if I say, uh, if I go to another reason, right? If I see my key pair, so what are the key pairs there? So here is a different key pair is there in this region. Okay. So, so your specific reason key pair and specific reason EC2 instance is there. If I go to my here, so my EC2 instance is this, this, uh, if I go to instances, I will see my, these other EC2 instances are there. If I go to other region, Ohio region, if I go, so Ohio region having these two instances. Okay, like this, this is running. 
it is instance in time. Okay, so different uh, reasons, different instances. So if you want to see the billing thing, okay, so billing and cost you go here. So here you can check here like payment things. So every month payment will be here in your um, bills. So when you click is here, like your monthly bill, so, so January month will not be calculated. It will be calculated on 31st. Okay. So that is the reason it's showing zero zero. But still this month is a this much of uh, like uh, services are used. And what are the services uh, like used, right? So uh, it will be giving you the more detailed explanation here. So in which service, like what is, uh, so it is showing zero zero because it's still it is using my free tier eligibility. So there is no charge on this. If I go, okay, CloudWatch, there is no. So these are the showing <clears throat> 1 million request is there. I think more than 1 million. 151 request is now only, okay. So it is a very like a higher limit. So, so it's still not to worry. So where my, this charges came. So if I see Elastic Compute Cloud, my charges came. You see here. My Mumbai region is the thirty dollar is showing because I'm using this much charges are coming. So you can clearly see like uh, how the charges are calculated, right? Hourly, right? So hourly basis. So you will be saying this is a point zero zero four four eight and T three medium instance. So you got these many hours and this much is point forty two is right. So this is your running instances charges. Okay. If it is a EBS one, so I told you 28.69 is a free, so it's still no zero charge, right? But when it is going more than 28.69 for this particular Mumbai region, so it will be charged, okay? So it is showing all the reason by reason your charges will be there, okay? So like if I see my US, 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 US. so this is Mumbai, so the total charge is like for my ECT compute is coming this like the, this will be showing you the charges things okay and payment whatever payment you do your payment uh, information will be here okay credit if you get the credit like I got the credit so I'm using my credit so my 188 dollar is remaining but my expiration date is a 31st Jan this month so if I don't use it, this complete credit so it will be less. So if you are using uh, like a services and uh, first it will be deducted from the credit. Okay. So once you get the credit, you will get the six month time like for your credit and then accordingly you can spend, right? You can divide into monthly, right? See how much you are doing, okay? So this is uh, the billing things you can see here. Okay, so uses also you can see what is the uh, cost and uses uh, like uh, cost categories and even you can set the budget also sometimes uh, like you want to set the budget like uh, if ten dollar more than that like charges are there it will create uh, some alarm so there is a you can create an alarm also the cost alert I have not created any budget. Okay, so these are the options in there for the this uh, particular billing related. Okay. So if I go to the another services, okay. So easy to instance, you can divide on the different different types of category instances. Okay, if I say my easy to instance, one is an instance types are based on the the type like T1 micro, mini, right, uh, small, medium, T2 large. So these are the definition of the instances. So these are the total number of instances. So if you see T2 is a very, very small, then it is going to increase T1, T2, T3, and then A1, A2, C3, T4, C5, 
and like this it is going large large and large like 96 cpu score they are giving 192 gb memory they are giving so this is the charges they are giving four dollar per hour charge like this is 3.696 okay so these types of instance are there like types of instance another type of instance like okay i can say like a, some spot request so spot instance is like whenever you need it uh like you can create a request so spot request instance you have to tell the configuration so you tell your configuration things like network and the cpus and the, according to that configuration you will be get spot but it will be paid okay other one is a uh, like reserve instance so these are the all paid categories the reserve instance like you can reserve your instance for future okay so whenever you want to use it you can use that reserve instance dedicated host right some server you want to create like big big server so allocated dedicated host so again the same thing comes here like you want to define the which time which availability john you want to select right so different different time zones okay so abhi right now virginia you are showing so which region you are showing so those availability join will come if you are if you are selecting the other like mumbai so mumbai re, mumbai availability zones will come so here you will see here the availability john will change so in india there are the three availability john okay ap south one a b c right so accordingly it will be showing you the availability john right so this kind of instances we generally no need of uh, Generally, the companies use those kind of instances for uh, a special request, right? Like they want. So this is the other type of category of the instances, okay? And uh, EC2 instance has the volume. So whatever EBS we are saying, so all the EBS volume is you can see here total volume. So if I say my entire my AP South one, I'm using this much of total volume. So 30 GB is like the I think 30 GB is total entire account. So if I have my other instances so like Ohio region, I'll see how many instances volume. So here is 16, 16 GB like two instances. So if it is in use means it will be charged. Okay. Sometimes if you are not using any EC2 instance volume, you can detach that volume. Okay. We can detach volume. So we can make it detail. So if instance volume is not used, you can detach it. Okay. So so volume is basically this is you can create your special new volume and you can allocate. So here you have option, right? You can add volume separately, right? So it will add on to your EC2 instance. So you can create a new volume and you can define the volume capacity, availability, John. So, or you can create a backup of the volume also. Suppose you have already this volume and you want to take the backup. So there is an action you can create a snapshot. And you can create a life cycle policy. Like you can say every day it will take the backup, right? So it will do automatic backup also. So volume backup you can do. Because this EBS volume is the actual your data, right? Your storage, right? The disk. Okay. So here load balancing options in there in EC2, like you have to, your one, like multiple EC2 machines are there. If one machine is down, so another machine you can have to handle the request. So there is the different types of load balancers, like application load balancer, network load balancer, gateway load balancer. So you can create this load balancer. So these are mostly all, these are the admin related things, the soft thing system operations okay so mostly the admin related things right where we need uh, ec2 related uh, this load balancing things if you need it then we can configure it okay so our work is mostly on the analytic services so i will show you the lambda but before that like we go to s3 means so s3 is a simple storage service the simple storage service S3 is a, like a file system. So for your entire account, there is a uh, like a, you have a one storage as a file system, and it has the bucket. 
So you already know the bucket concept, right? Bucket is like a uh, high level uh, folder, right? You can create uh, your bucket. So bucket is, so here, if you create a bucket, so reason why is bucket. So I mean, right now, yeah, like uh, you are a specific reason you are going to create a bucket. So you can select in the bucket. Okay. So when you are, uh, it is taking now this reason. Okay, but you can select which reason you want to create a bucket. So bucket name is uh, unique across the globe. If I'm giving this bucket name, this bucket name will be taken by many people, right? So it, it will give me the error. I'm going to create uh, this bucket. Because this bucket is already exists. Because many people created this bucket. One person already created this bucket. So you cannot take it this name. So you have to choose a different global unique name so nobody has created so you have to so i gave like okay so today date one i try okay so zero one twenty 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 four this code name is okay let's see this one bucket is somebody created or not today in this ohio region or i checked in the in so I try to create this bucket. So this bucket was not there and this bucket is created. So this bucket is created. Now in this bucket, I can create a folder. So I want to identify my files in a different, different folders. So I can create a folders here. I say my folder. Okay. So it's just like a file system. You can define multiple folders and directly you can write the upload the file so if you want to upload file here in the bucket so add file option is there and you can select uh, any any file you select and then upload okay so this file is directly uploaded into the bucket okay it's not in the so if you see here this file is uploaded and this file is uploaded and if you go to another folder if you want to upload here you can upload the file the same file you can upload here so it will not have any problem okay so you can but in the same in the same folder you cannot upload the two same file for that you have to use the version so version is like it will create a multiple version suppose this is the first copy and this is the second copy so like this, you have to enable the version in your bucket. So in bucket, there is a property to come here. So there is a bucket version. So you have to enable version here. By default, it is suspended. If you enable the versioning, so it will be every time, like the, if the same name file comes, it will create a new version. Okay. So that option is obviously versioning. If you want to enable the encryption, decryption, right? So there are the different types of encryptions are there in S3. So S3 is supporting, if you click on this edit, you can see. So these are the S3 enabled one. The first one is the S3 is provided, server-side encryption with Amazon S3 managed key. And other two are provided by, provided by the KMS. KMS is the one service Key management service. So key management service is providing the encryption. Okay. So, but this is a paid one. If you are going to use the KMS, thing, okay. But server side uh, encryption by S3, this is not. Uh, so you have enabled this. Okay. And uh, permission tab is there. Suppose you want to make it this bucket publicly access. So by default, is a block all public access. So if I'm trying to access my URL of S3 bucket, okay, suppose this file, so there is a one copy URL. To so copy this URL and try to open, try to open this URL, okay? So it is saying access denied, okay? So I need to enable access. So I have to remove this checkbox, right? The, the permission I do, and here I have to remove, okay? So I have to remove and it will allow the block access public. Okay. So it is then it will not be secure, right? Because anyone can access your file. 
whatever file path you gave, it will be accessible. So there are the two URLs are there. One is the copy S3 URL. If you see this copy S3 URL, this URL is basically a S3 protocol. So it is giving you S3 colon slash slash like this, your bucket and then your file. Okay. So this is generally we use like when we are reading our data from the Spark, right? In the Spark we are reading from the S3 bucket. So we will use this path, not HTTP path. An HTTP path will be used for the browser. Like I want to access like my file, in my browser. Okay, so I will use the HTTP one. And that one is copy URL, this copy URL, okay? If you want to download any particular file, you can click and download. If you want to delete, delete, you can do. Or any other action you want to copy, move, right? So there are the different options are there. So this is S3 is basically here. Simple thing in S3 is like we are just uploading the files. We are uploading the file in S3. And these files, we can use it in our any service. Okay. So when I will tell about Lambda, so Lambda is a computing service. Okay. So we have seen so far like EC2. So AWS uh, EC2 is a computing service. AWS EC2. So EC2 is a computing service. Okay. EC2, AWS EC2. Elastic Compute Cloud. Okay. So Elastic Compute Cloud, Elastic Compute Cloud. Okay. And this service is the virtual machine. Virtual machine in AWS. You, you will see in other cloud, right? The GCP, we call it PM. And Azure also we call it Azure VM, right? So this is here, name is EC2. And we seen that uh, EC2 has a uh, different instance type. So instance types are there, right? E2, micro, medium, mini type. So this is E2, micro, micro, mini, medium, right? So different types of instances are there. C1 instance, C2 instance, C3, C4. So all these are categories. And, uh, uh, I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, EC2s are generally, I mean, I found it online. EC2s are generally used for a uh, distributed computing of uh, worker nodes or uh, mm -hmm. kind of things. I mean, we I use. Uh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For uh, like uh, instance, so there is a one more category of the instances like the CPU intensive type of instances, CPU intensive. Like this C1, C2 comes in that. Okay. Okay, another one is a uh, uh, memory intensive. So you have to think about it. What type of instances you want to use? Your your instances are more processing capabilities intensive. You want to you want to get more memory int intensive and RAM memory, right? So there is a M one M two. You know, you know. I mean, Spark architecture we have a driver and worker node, right? So mm -hmm. I mean, cluster will assign yeah. the resources. I mean, will we do the same here too? On the process, see here, like a Hadoop Spark, you want to install. So, first of all, here is the EC2, you have a Ubuntu, right? Ubuntu, you are having the, your Spark installed, right? So, mm -hmm. if you are using a multi node cluster here, so you have to create all EC2 instances first, or suppose four, five instances, four instances you created. So, okay. EC2 you created, Ubuntu instances you create. So, Ubuntu, EC2 instances you created. Now, these all instances are the like a one master and the other three are worker, right? One master and three workers, right? Something like this configuration is there. And okay. you will definitely choose the master one. It like you have to keep it more memory and CPU intensive one. You have to keep it. Other workers one is fine. So then it will handle. But when you are not using the EC2 for your Spark installation, you are using EMR. So EMR is having this capability, like EMR is uh, like you it's only for a Hadoop, right? So auto EMR. scaling, auto scaling is there. If you have selected that option while creating a EMR cluster, I will show later. So auto scaling is like uh, it will scale up and scale down depending on your workload. Suppose your job is taking more uh, size, more data size processing, more data size processing. Okay, so it will increase increase number of 
instances. Actually, EMR is also same EC2 only. Okay, In, internally it is EC2 only. Okay, whenever you see, whenever you create an EMR cluster, so if this EMR cluster in the back end, it will create an EC2 instance. Okay, but you don't have the control on that EC2 instance because you are taking care of EMR cluster through that EC2 yeah, instance. We are creating the configurations based so on where is the, the horizontal resources. Where is the scalability option comes when you are making a cluster the scalability and this scalability option will ask you how many nodes you want to scale up and scale down so if you give the min and max capacity so main capacity is by default like okay one is there min. but max you have control like you can say okay four i want so initially you are starting with one but it can increase up to four because you are giving the four is the max capability. So here EC2 is everything is a manually and here you have to use load balancer. I already discussed here. So load balancer things you have to use here for elastic load balancer. So load balancer like application load balancer, network load balancer, so application load balancer. So everything you are managing your own, so you are not chargeable. But if you are using the EMR cluster, so it will be paid and it will be it will be paid by you is there, and any, is there any free, free tier for uh, no EMR? emr is not free tier emr if i say if you run for one hour it is coming like a 10 rupees it's it's not too costly but but thing is if you go to the next hour right so it will be charged completely even if you are using only 10 second or uh, like a one minute extra it will be charged for an hour then so okay. hourly billing is there hourly billing means if you are uh, within hour so complete hour will be called okay complete hour will be called okay so the charges will be this is i'm saying for one instance emr cluster one instance okay but if you are using multiple instances emr generally we use for the large data person purpose more than one instance like a scalability okay because emr cluster is keep running it is even though your job is not running right Okay, one instance chart. Even your job is not running, but it's still it's a uh, cluster is there, right? So it will be chargeable. Okay, so it will be hourly billing. Even your job is not running. So in the EMR, there is a concept of transient cluster, and one is a long running cluster. So transient cluster is whenever it uh, create a cluster, create cluster ad hoc, and run job. Next, it will run the job and then terminate the cluster in job. So sometimes like ad hoc request comes and you want to create cluster on the fly and run job and terminate cluster automatically, terminated cluster. So this kind of cluster is called term, like so we can use. So, so setting up your cluster in EMR is costly, no doubt, right? Because it is giving all managed, right? Even high risk group, everything you can, uh, like you can set up the cluster within a two minutes two, three minutes, your cluster will be ready with all the services, high risk to edge space, everything will come, right? But you have to pay for that. Transient and another one is a long running cluster. So long running cluster is even your job is completed, so your cluster will be running, okay? So whenever, so generally some companies afford long running cluster, right? So they are not caring about uh, the, even though um, your job is completed, so so, so suppose some hourly jobs are there. So hourly jobs, you will not create again and again cluster, right? So you will be using the uh, long running cluster, right? Where cluster will not be stopped. So they will be using a small cluster, right? All depend on the how much data size processing you are going to do, right? If your data size processing is not too much, so you will be creating a one small cluster, right? Three, four node cluster. Okay, that you can manage it. Yeah, or otherwise EC2 you can manage, right? So EC2 also you can run your Spark job. Okay, one single node you can create in EC2. That we can integrate like... uh, the four um, EC2 instances to the... Yeah, so uh, all, all should be SSH connected. Okay, same mm -hmm. thing is like uh, in your virtual box VM, if I create here four virtual machines, same mm -hmm. thing I can here, right? And these four virtual mm -hmm. machines, and connect to each other and then I can create a multi-node cluster. Yeah. So just just they should have SSS connection from one node to another node. So if you have set up so 
how to connect SSH connection from one node to another node. So you have to define some key gen, right? Uh, you will create a private public key gen, right? You remember, right, uh, in the Hadoop installation we did, but that is locally. So that is the reason all five services are running locally, five services, right? Yes, Hadoop services. So Hadoop services running locally. Same five services are running on the different VMs, right? Like, okay, I say data node and uh, uh, name node on one machine or like a processing service on one machine like that, I can configure also, okay? So okay, any, I uh, talk about advanced versions, I mean, any, any advanced services uh, of EMR, I mean, for the clusters or uh, still EMR is running more? For Hadoop Spark only EMR, okay? Hadoop Spark, like Hadoop Spark. But if you want to use only Spark, the glue is there, only Spark, only Spark. You will not get any Hadoop component. But suppose you say my job is not a Hadoop dependent. So suppose mm -hmm. when you go to the EMR, Suppose I say I have to read data from the S3 and I have to write data onto 5. So I cannot have any other option. Okay, Only EMR is the option because EMR is providing an entire cluster of Hadoop ecosystem component. Okay, But okay. Blue is, suppose my requirement is not related to Hadoop. My job is like a, some, some file is in S3. Just I want to read file and write the data again back to S3. So I can use a Spark job like Python Spark job or Scala, anything I can use, Python or Scala, Spark job, which will read file CSV, which read CSV file in S3 and write output file in S3. So here I'm not saying any Hadoop uh, uh, dependency. So I can use Glue, but Glue is uh, not chargeable. Glue is, right? a, Glue is a workflow management. I mean, it, it, no, it shows workflow manager. Workflow management tool is the step function. Okay, step step functions, function. but yeah, we 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 follow a process, right? In a glue job, so step by step, we will add the yeah. The glue tools. is basically a crawler is there, right? You have to create a. Yeah. I will show that. Okay, crawler is there, and you create a table, uh, like a metadata. Okay, and mm -hmm. catalog metadata. Okay, and after that, you will create a glue script. So glue first, you create a crawler. The crawler is nothing but your table. Your table of your S3 data, okay? So you can use the uh, Athena tool for querying the data. Athena tool you can use yes. for query. We okay. can use it for- uh, And uh, another one component in the glue is uh, glue script. So this glue script is nothing but your Spark code. This Spark code can be uh -huh. Pi-Star code or Spark Scala code, anything, okay? So this glue script you run, and that will be using your crawler table, right? And uh, it will be getting a metadata and glue script, okay? So you can write independent Spark job, you can write that it is not chargeable like glue, okay? Glue has some limit, okay? Some upper limit is there. So I think it is uh, not chargeable like the EMR, okay? Because EMR is giving you the cluster. So glue is a serverless, it's a serverless ETL tool, serverless, serverless ETL tool. So whatever the services are there, all are the serverless, right? If I say Lambda, so Lambda is also serverless computing. But mm -hmm. what is the difference between the Lambda and the Glue? So Glue is specific only for Spark, okay? But Lambda is serverless computing service for different uh, runtime environment, like Python type of job you can run, Java you can run, C Sharp you can run, you can run Perl, Ruby, Around five, six, six, seven environment are there. So you have Perl Ruby also there. So some are, are Node.js. So you can have a different environment you want to run. So you don't need a machine. You don't need a EC2 machine for running an application of Python. Otherwise, if I want to run a, some Python application, you need a EC2 machine, right? And EC2 machine, you will install Python, right? Then only you can run your Python code. But Lambda is saying it is a serverless. You don't need any EC2 machine. It's a serverless. Just you use a Lambda interface. There is a one Lambda handler. In Lambda function, you have a Lambda handler. Okay, they have given a Lambda handler is a one code editor window. There you write your function code. You write your, you write your Python code. 
and this python code you can execute i show you this lambda the so next thing i will take it lambda only okay the so lambda is the very dominating service right it is very uh like the like it has integration with multiple services so lambda is like an intermediate service which can get the data from one service and write the data to the another service okay so here i don't have any lambda function but i created in the in my region so so in whatever region you selected on the top it will create a lambda function so if you go to the create function there are the options like you want to create a lambda from the scratch or you want to take some blueprint or some docker containers or images okay i'm creating a scratch so i'm defining my python lambda so any function name you can use. so here is this runtime environment and so java go language dot net okay so here python also multiple version so you can choose the uh, not lower not higher just take it 3.10 and uh, just define some some role is needed because lambda service some role we have to execute my lambda function so if if you have not any role so you can create a new role with the basic lambda permission so it will allow or if i have already role so i have already created a role i am just taking that role so here i am permission will come in picture okay I'm not going everything uh, in a one go. Okay, I will uh, just high level. I'm going to tell. I will show lambda. Then I will clear all these things. So IAM service is very important service like a role based access permission service. So whatever services you are using, they are invoked based on the user role group policies. These are things come in picture, right? So user means like I'm a user, or I can create a somebody's as a user. I want to create. even you don't have the aws account but you can access s3 bucket so generally some companies they have partners and they have some stakeholders or they have some uh, vendors right so they don't have the aws account they are uh, like shared account but they want to give some companies want to give their access of their s3 file so they can create a user for them and this user they can log in in aws account their own aws account they log in and they can see the s3 access okay i will show you so just like i created before test 1 2 3 4 user and this test 1 2 3 4 user i have created some user and password and this password can be changed when he will log in first time it will ask you to change password so if i have given this user i have given i i i added this user in a some group or or i i created a some role so i have given okay so suppose i say this test user okay some role i created and this role i assign this user so what will happen suppose i created some role user uh, role saying ec2 and i am saying what are the services you want to give the access suppose i say s3 full access s3 full access means somebody can read my s3 files edit file delete file and upload file anything it can do okay so i am creating a one role and i am giving a role is my s3 full access okay so this role i created and this role once this role is created i can add in the users like i can assign i think here in the S three, my S three. Okay, so that role I have to add in the policy. 
Okay, so I have to create another one more policy. I have to create. Okay, I can create a policy. So which services I want to use? You see to S3. So we will create a role. So these are all things are associated with each other. Okay. Role, permission, user, group, right? So we can create, uh, if I'm saying, if I want to run any Lambda, so Lambda I have, uh, I'm, I'm saying some Lambda is having some IM role. Okay. So IM role, I will create a one role here for Lambda. So I create a Lambda. So if you see this this role I created before. So in this lambda role, what are the access I want to give my lambda? So lambda should be able to create a S, uh, it should be able to access S3, it should be able to access EC2, SNS, SQS. So whatever services I want to work with lambda, I will give all the access here. Okay. And this is the uh, one is a AWS lambda basic execution role. So this is this is the one uh, basic uh, like a uh, execution role is needed lambda so that is also required so once this all role is added uh, these all policies are added in this role and that role i will give to my lambda while i'm creating here okay so if you if you don't want to use your existing role so if you go with this it will assign the basic execution role it will create okay called a lambda so suppose i'm creating this lambda so now my lambda function is created my python lambda function so if you see here in this window this is a code window so if i want to run any python code i can write here python hello okay so if i just uh, deploy this code okay so it is using its own environment internally right where it is creating some file is created executing the file right and some python environment is ready for this one right so it is internally being done so I'm just writing Python code and I'm deploying and test. So when I do testing, so I'm giving uh, like some test event and uh, save and invoke. If I run it, so my Lambda is executed. So some status code, hello is coming. So this same Lambda, I will trigger from the different, different trigger point. Suppose I want to trigger this Lambda from these other trigger point will come, you see? like API gateway. API gateway is a REST API interface, okay? Suppose I want to trigger my Lambda from S3. If I want to trigger my Lambda from SQS, okay, these are all services. First, I will tell about these all other services. Then we will see that Lambda, okay? So I will cover SQS, SNS, like how to send the notification like through email. So we can create a SNS service, right? So Lambda can be integrated with all these many services it can be integrated right okay. like you want to integrate with DynamoDB so DynamoDB is a NoSQL database okay if you want to trigger uh, you, uh, so different trigger point you can define so this will automatically trigger lambda so one way is lambda you are triggering by manually you are going to your lambda function and just trigger lambda for testing right you are triggering like just click on the test so lambda is triggered but I want to agree, Lambda should be automatically triggered based on some event. So that part we can do by using this adding trigger. Okay. So if suppose my file comes in S3, like I'm telling you the use case for the Lambda. 
like one use case is my file is arriving in S3 and that is a, some TXT file and I want to read the data dynamically and write the data to the DynamoDB table. DynamoDB is a NoSQL database. So this trigger I will add here S3 trigger. Okay. So I have already shown the demo in the last batch. Okay. So I will do one thing on Monday. I will show you. Okay. If you want to see uh, one those uh, videos on the AWS one, you can follow in this playlist. Okay. So I'm uploading this playlist. Okay. So Sorry. this playlist already some AWS related uh, one is there. Okay. You can watch here. Lambda API. So, so I will. So if you want to, I will do in, from the spec. But I'm saying still you want to check more in the detail, right? So you can go through that. So I'm uploading two more videos here. So you will see uh, Lambda integrations and with the other services. Okay. How can we, EC2 can be integrated with Lambda. Suppose I say, if I want to, my EC2 instance, I want to start and stop through Lambda. I can do that. Okay. So I have, uh, if you have joined my other classroom, uh, which I told you the one, here are all the courses here. So this kind of EC2 instance you can do. So if I write this code in the Lambda, it will start my EC2 instance. So whatever EC2 instance I'm giving here, it will start the EC2 instance. If I want to stop, so stop underscore instances, you can pass uh, your instance ID. So it is dynamic, right? So I can take it this EC2 instance dynamically. I mean, right now it is hard coded as in the list, but I can read from the property file or text file, some file I can read. Okay. So that I can make it more, more dynamic. It's up to in my control. But I mean, right now I'm just checking how to read any instance from the list and make it start. Suppose you have to start 10 instances automatically or you want to stop the 10 instances, right? So these all things automation you can do with the Lambda. Lambda can read the file from the S3. Lambda can write the data to the DynamoDB. So there is a Boto3, I will talk about that. So that is a Boto3, we use a one Python API code, so which will allow to get any client or resource. So when you want to connect to S3, you have to create a client. And if you want to get any like SQL DB, no SQL database, RDS, okay, so you can use the resource DynamoDB. So you will get the object. You got the object. Um, now you can, you have got the object. Now you can transfer the data, read the data from one object and transfer the data to the another object. So it is kind of ETL, right? You are accessing data from the source and writing the data to the DynamoDB, a target. Okay, you are writing here, port ID. So this kind of code you can write in the Lambda. Okay. So it's a serverless computing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this, this code is uh, there in my, I have already given you guys uh, the classroom link, right? So the classroom link you can follow. Okay. So you can see whatever source code I upload there. You can Okay, check this classroom link. I will think the uh, you can join this one. Here is the uh, all source code. Okay, so we'll connect on Monday. Okay, so I will be uh, starting the Lambda and uh, API gateway. So if you can go through it. Lambda and uh, API Gateway and uh, DynamoDB. Okay. So these are the services you just go through, right? What are the, the services, right? How can be integrated? Okay. So we'll see now a small, small uh, use cases where we can integrate, right? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Hey, uh, I have a request. Uh, could you suggest any websites to 
query the data or any kind of uh, things we can work with in real time query the data right what you are saying yeah i mean for the transformations what kind of websites we can prefer to or anything like that or any repositories github repositories oh you mean to say this uh, spark transformation right uh, mapping. Yeah, yeah yeah mapping uh, filtering or uh, group so you group want uh, some source code example like for practice purpose right like yeah, yeah, for the okay, I mean, we have to work on code right in future. Uh, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so, okay, did you complete the Spark the examples? All the examples there is a joins related windowing function, yeah, yeah. I mean, I worked on it, so I mean, let I me followed, let me uh, give you some package. Not the examples. Uh, I, I mean, I, I followed the, all the syntaxes and everything, so so you want like more uh, aggregation kind of one right example. yeah uh, uh, let, let's take an example as a lead code um we used to get questions the last no, lead questions. code is different right lead code one is a python sql right python sql is different thing and whatever is spark transformation that is different the spark transformation you are doing some data analytics right okay and lead code one is a python sql those are the general problems if you want like lead code type of examples those are different uh like a Coding examples. Right? I'm asking about the scenario based questions or anything like that. Scenario based question in the Spark or Python? In the Spark. In the Spark. In the Spark, right. Okay, mm -hmm. so I got it some examples questions on the interview, right? Okay, so that, that one I will share to you. Okay, the complex uh, transformation things you, you can see some POCs example. They are uh, given okay. data set in there and that data set you are. Uh, transform right uh, different uh, analytics they need right so accordingly you will handle okay so better way is okay one is like uh, you can see the github right you try to find okay i also do the same way right suppose you want to spark transformation in pi spark okay some github code so some poc kind of code and did you check it like the uh, one on this this website TML, right? This one. Okay. Okay. Here are the some project source codes are there. This one. There are the multiple projects are there, right? To see this real time change data capture and this and this one. Okay. This is a real data project analytics, right? This is a Reddit. So one guy football data engineering, right? Okay. Right. If you are able to man, uh, see real time socket streaming data. These are okay. small examples, but I'm saying, and, and some of them you can find some GitHub code. So GitHub code, see, this will come with the practice only because you cannot get everything in a one place. What I'm saying is you, you take it the scenarios and try to solve those scenarios. Okay. Because mostly places now you will find a simple use cases. These are very, very simple. Just reading data, doing the filter and this one, right? Order by this one. These are the simple ones, right? But some complex one means like you have to find the uh, some data sets, right? Like the where um like the some Regular. I will I will check like some some book source code also there, some source code in the book. They mm -hmm. are doing some analytics. But if you try at least uh, like uh, some functions label transformations, like like concatenation things, how do you yeah. Suppose this scenario comes to you, you have to create a one full name. So how will you write your function and then how to use that function as a UDF function? So how to create a UDF for that function, how to use it, okay? So just copy pasted this code snips in your notes, right? So that you will have anytime you get the similar scenarios, you don't need to, you can write code quickly. Suppose one scenario is like you have a, you have to create a one new column with the different values like life stage is a new column you have to add so where you want to say okay if the age is less than 30 if age is the 30 19 between or greater than 90 so accordingly you will add the one more age column right life stage okay so like this you are using the when condition you are using the when conditions how to mm -hmm. use when mm -hmm. right so try to find first uh, like the union operations, right? Union related operations. Yeah. yeah. Union all. Union, union by name also there, right? Yeah, and yeah. Union yeah. all, right? The different of transformations are there. Yeah. Some transformation yeah. like a windowing function related 
So straight yeah. forward now, people ask in interviews for, for the windowing function. They will yeah. ask uh, window function transformation, by spark transformation, like two ways. One is uh, like you are using uh, uh, yeah. the spark SQL or you are using a data frame API. So both the ways you should know. If spark SQL is there, you should know how to SQL. how to how to write in a SQL query. Or if yeah. you are going to use a data frame API, so you have to define a window, you have to define a specification, like and then you will be doing. So will they ask uh, you know, do we have to use Spark SQL there? Or uh, is it fine to use See, data? Anything could be there, like the uh, in interviews, they can ask you any one of okay. But if they particularly they say okay, they need a Spark data frame API only. So you cannot have choice. So data frame API, you should know all the function, transformation function, right? There is a dense and score rank function is there, right? Order by yeah. function is there. Mm -hmm. But if you are writing a SQL, so SQL query is uh, like, uh, you know, uh, simple select uh, query so, that you can write and uh, dense and score rank. So it is- Can we use uh, on, a, on a Spark SQL, can we use uh, uh, stored procedures? We call it a stored process, right? We can call it, right? Like, but which database what, is what supported? Have in, uh, SSIS. Uh, so if you want to say like a Spark SQL, suppose MS, you are MS SQL. MS, hmm? we, we have some uh, short processes in MS SQL, right? MS SQL, SQL server, you are saying, SQL server, right? Yeah, yeah. So, but, but uh, how will you invoke it? Because there is a Spark uh, data frame you get from SQL Server, okay, using uh, stored procedure in there, right? Suppose you have a stored procedure over in the, generally we we read the table, right, in the SQL Server, but still you want to call a SQL Server procedure, right? So if you see here, prepared query like this, execute command is there. Is there, okay. option is there, prepared query, right, okay? So generally, we don't use this one. We generally give the either table here or we can give the query if you want to write your custom query or you have the option, you want to execute some procedure. This is SQL Server, right? Execute DBO dot. But first, it will make a connection, right? It will make a connection. It will get the result from the stored procedure is returning the as a data frame, okay? So this will come in the data frame, right? This is a PySpark code. Mm -hmm. This way you can try. See, anything is possible. First, you have to see uh, how we can pass the parameters right to our code, and that can execute there and uh, get because Spark doesn't have its own procedure, right? Spark is the processing, mm -hmm. right? And we can we can use uh, UDF. So UDF, UDF and is an internal function, right? Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, right. So that is a Python because of the Python, right? Python support the function. So normal function, you can make it as a UDF. So, but we are saying we have to execute something in the database and get the result. So in that case, our Spark UDF will not work out, right? Or otherwise what you do, first you get the entire data of the table and write the same UDF, the whatever procedure code is there, same you write in the, like on the database. The two options are there. Either you invoke directly your procedure and get the data after uh, invoking your procedure, or if you know the procedure very well, so just replicate the uh, whatever the steps are there. The same you can apply in the data frame here. You can do in this part. So then you can use the function. You can write the same thing in um, user defined function is done. So if you don't want to make it dependency on the SQL server, right, procedure, right? So you can write your custom function here, this function. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll check it and uh, give you some more uh, the website or anywhere like source code I find. Okay, I will uh, give you, okay. Try some AWS project. I will be sharing the one AWS cloud project uh, also, drive. Okay, who have given email ID? Okay, ping me the email ID. I will share. Okay, so now you can start the this project for AWS project. So I have some project in my drive. So I will give you around ten projects I have in AWS. So you can see this all AWS project. You can see like Lambda, Pi, 
uh, EMR. Okay, so different different services in Lambda. So this Lambda project, like website monitoring project. So it is using the DynamoDB Lambda. So you have to use the project like this way. Like we are the multiple services because single services is no point to use. So you need to understand each and every services purpose. Like now, what is Kinesis? Kinesis is the data stream service, right? Sending the data as a streaming. Like we call it Kafka, right? We use. So Kinesis is the alternate in the AWS, right? It's providing a streaming service data. Okay. Ping yeah, me email is... ID here. Okay, I will check it. Okay, and uh, I will share this project also. See, this project will be helping you to understand the architecture, the real-time project architecture. Even you can see the description here, but I will you share you the drive there. These videos will be there. Okay, so otherwise you will not get the access of these videos directly because it needs a paid account. Okay, mm -hmm. and that is too costly. Okay. But I will give you this video, all this I have already downloaded. And uh, but basic architecture you want to understand, you can go through here. And for AWS credit, I'm telling you, find such a good project architecture, POC, end-to-end uh, -end flow, you just prepared and give it, you will get the $300 credit, okay? Like this kind of architecture, you can just say, okay, you are... You, you just tell the flow of the data, how the data is flowing, okay? And do we have to give on-premises? Do we have to give on-premises side or? Cloud one only, otherwise, uh, what is the point, right? To take the credit, okay, right? We are, uh, let's take, uh, we are migrating to cloud, so that's why we are. Yeah, you can say, you can say the similar architecture, like you are migrating, you can say migration project is there and this project is going to use these many services of AWS, Lambda, Glue, so make it more and more services combination like this. Okay. More services combination like Dynamo is there, Aurora. Like, like they should fi find your case study is really valid case study. Okay, and this case study uh, has a purpose, right? You are showing some purpose of this case study where you are processing the log streaming data and then you are storing the data in RDS, like MySQL RDS, right? So this, this uh, you can get more description way. Here you can get it, right? You can understand the flow. And same flow, just make a paragraph and attach there with your account. Okay. 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 I will share the project. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay.